morning everybody myself dr p sen gupta assistant professor department of veterinary gynecology and obstetrics bihar veterinary college patna today we will discuss about hereditary and congenital anomalies of female reproductive tract and this will be the part 1 of our lecture series learning objectives types of hereditary and congenital anomalies of female reproductive tract incidence of these anomalies among different breeds etiology and prognosis early diagnosis of these disorders preventive measures if any types of reproductive tract anomaly the first one is ovarian hypoplasia second segmental aplasia of mullerian duct which is also known as white sweeper disease third free martin and fourth hermaphrodite ovarian hypoplasia definition ovarian hypoplasia is a condition where the ovary undergoes in incomplete development and a part or whole of ovary lacks the normal number or complement of primordial follicles primordial follicles are oocytes surrounded by a single layer of flat granulosa cells a calf is born with almost 50000 to 1 lakh primordial follicles in both ovaries and if the number of follicles are lower in number or greatly reduced in number then these calves will be called hypoplastic and sometimes they can be so much hypoplastic that only 500 to 1000 follicles can be there in the ovary or even no follicles can be there in the ovary etiology this is a disorder having genetic predisposition and is caused by single autosomal recessive gene pre predisposition mostly prevalent in old swedish highland breed with white coat color or at least white ears an incidence of 1.9% has been reported out of which left ovarian hypoplasia is more common rectal palpation findings in heifers the hypoplastic ovaries are so small to locate since the size of the ovary is directly proportional to the number of primordial follicles it contains and since these heifers with ovarian hypoplasia have lower number of primordial follicles definitely their size the ovarian size of these heifers are smaller than normal heifers and they can be so small that in rectal palpation one might find difficulty in locating the ovaries sometimes they can be like cord like thickening in the cranial border of the ovarian ligament slightly raised and form like p ovary can be kidney bean in shape with smooth and stressed surface these are the type of ovaries you are likely to get in hypoplastic ovarian condition sometimes the ovary can have as many follicles so as to make the animal to come to cycle or estrus and if the animal has come to heat or estrus or has a, has had a normal estrus cycle some luteal scars can be present but these animals with ovarian hypoplasia mostly do not show estrus cycles or if they show estrus cycles they are few cycles only because they don't have the normal complement of follicles to have a a uh, long reproductive life 
if you do a ultrasound you will not find any follicles in the ovary in case of uh, ovary in hypoplasia if it is complete hypoplasia we are not going to get any follicles or if it is even partial hypoplasia uh, if the number of follicles are greatly reduced might be follicular diseases can be completely arrested and we don't get any follicles in ultrasound tubular genitalia if you palpate the tubular genitalia they will be infantile very small just like pencils the diameter of a pencil so this will be the diameter of the tubular genitalia that is the uterine horns why it occurs like this because the growth of the tubular genitalia is dependent upon estrogen and estrogen are released from growing follicles so if follicles are not growing the estrogen will not be released and the animal will not be exposed to estrogen and therefore these animals do not show any growth of the genitalia and they will be just like a infantile genitalia just in the diameter of a pencil general appearance how the animal the ovarian hypoplasia will look from outside it will look like a castrated male like a steer with long legs narrow pelvis fully developed adult and teeth either totally white or at least with white hairs so this disorder is associated with white coat color in the picture you can see in the top top left picture you can see the right ovary of this um, specimen is normal this is normal and you can also see one uh, follicle in this ovary okay the left one this uh, ovary is hypoplastic and it is just appearing as a cord like thickening so this is there is no proper ovarian structure in the left side in the picture in the bottom you can see both the ovaries are missing both the ovaries are hypoplastic so it can be unilateral it can be bilateral the second disorder of the reproductive tract is segmental aplasia of the mullerian duct which is also known as white hipper disease definition white hipper disease is a congenital defect of the reproductive tract where there is segmental aplasia of mullerian or paramesonephric ducts especially an imperforate hymen and associated with white coat color as you know that mullerian or paramesonephric ducts are embryologic duct systems from which the tubular genitalia arises especially the female reproductive tract is originating from the mullerian or the paramesonephric duct and the tubular genitalia when we say the tubular genitalia it we mean the ovider to vagina this part is derived from mullerian or paramesonephric duct the ovary on the other hand is having a completely different embryologic origin and is not derived from mullerian or paramesonephric duct so in this disorder ovaries are normal ovaries are not affected because they do not originate from mullerian or paramesonephric duct one thing more that this disease is highly correlated with imperforate hymen so what is a hymen hymen is a band of tissue or a membrane which separates vestibule from vagina so vagina up till vagina the origin is from paramesonephric duct the so vestibule do have a different embryologic origin so these two blind pouches actually fuse and the membrane in between actually becomes patent in the embryonic life itself and if this membrane is not patent then there will be a membrane separating the vestibule and the vagina this membrane is what we call imperforate hymen incidence and breed predisposition reported to occur in 10% of shorthand breeds 
also has been reported in Holstein, Jersey, Ayrshire, and Guernsey breed. Caused by single recessive sex limited gene with linkage to gene for white coat color. So this is a sex linked gene disorder and that to recessive gene. So inbreeding, if we, in a farm inbreeding is going on, then these disorders are more likely to come up because in inbreeding, recessive genes are expressed. So this is a sex linked, linked recessive gene disorder and it is having a linkage with white coat color. So these heifers will be white in color or at least the ears should be white. So these are the different types of conditions that we come to see in white heifer disease. In the top left, we find a condition called double cervix. So there are two cervical openings, opening into a common uterine body and then we have the bifurcation of the horn. Just below this, we have uterus didelphis. What is uterus didelphis? It is also having two cervical openings, opening into two completely separated uterine tubes. The difference between double cervix and uterus didelphis is uterus in double cervix, the cervical openings open into a common uterine body Whereas in uterus diadelphus, the partition is complete. Even you can see the partition is going beyond the cervical opening. So the openings are, cervical opening is opening into two different uterine tubes. They are completely separated. Whereas here, they are opening into a common uterine body and then the partition is separating the two tubes. In the bottom picture, we find segmental aplasia of the blocked horn. So one part of the horn is blocked. In this case, what will happen? The oocyte, the fertilized um, zygote will not be able to count and implant in the um, uterus. So after fertilization, the embryo comes to the uterus and it gets implanted in the horn. So if the cranial part of the horn is aplastic, then implantation will not happen and pregnancy will be interfered or conception will not occur. So in this case, we will have infertility. Picture in the top, you can see one horn is completely missing. One horn is completely missing and this condition we call uterus uniponis. In the bottom right picture, we find that the horn is a plastic at the caudal part, not the cranial part. It is a plastic at the caudal part, and the cranial part is uh, filled with lots of fluid or mucus, and it is greatly distended. So these are the types of pictures we tend to get in cases of white heifer disease. This is a very rare condition. They are not very common, and only happen if inbreeding is going on. So. In, if we even a farm artificial insemination is going on, then these conditions will not should not come up. But if in a farm inbreeding is going on, these conditions can come up, though they are very rare. In this picture, picture to the left, you can see that one horn is completely missing. The ovaries are normal, and this is a case of uterus uniformis. In the picture to the right. You have two cervical openings opening into two separate uterine tubes, and this is what we call uterus didelphis. In the picture to the left, again, we have a aplasia occurring at the caudal part of the uterine horn, and the cranial part filled with uh, mucus, red brown mucus is filled, uh, filling this space, and it is it can be so large, so heavily distended that it may resemble a four month pregnant uterus. Double cervical os, os cervix, double cervix, sorry, double external os cervix, two showing two completely separate cervical canals. So there are two cervical canals having two separate openings. So this is double cervix. 
tubular genitalia of hippers with white hipper disease, imperforate hymen or hymenal constriction, absence of either the cranial part of vagina, pelvic, or uterine body, that is what we call aplasia. So there can be completely blocked vagina, cervix, or body. One part of the horn can be missing, which is uterus unicornis, or it can be cystic dilation in uterine horn due to a plastic body large enough to simulate a four month pregnant uterus. Uterine horn filled with yellow to dark tan brown mucus. Vagina is usually short and narrow or may be enlarged or dilated with mucus and pus. There can be persistence of mid median wall of paramesinophic duct, double cervix, median septum in the vagina. So basically what happens, the paramesinophic ducts are two tube-like structures with fused in the caudal part. If this fusion is not complete, then we can have a partition separating cervix and the cranial part of the vagina. That is what we call median wall, persistence of median wall of the paramagnetic duct. And rare case of uterus diadesis can be there. Regarding ovaries, ovaries are normal since they do not arise from paramagnetic duct. So ovaries are not affected in case of white hipper disease. Note that ovaries are affected in case of ovarian hypoplasia. So if in question or in examination, it is asked to differentiate hypoplasia from white hipper disease, this can be a very good differentiating point that ovaries are normal in white hipper disease, whereas ovaries are hypoplastic or abnormal or small in case of ovarian hypoplasia. Estrus and estrus cycles, if ovulation occurs in the ovary, Adjust, adjacent to the abnormal form, regression of corpus luteum may not occur, resulting in permanent anastrum. So suppose one horn is affected and it is a plastic, it is not having normal uh, endometrium lining. What will happen? The ovary, ipsilateral ovary or um, adjacent ovary, if ovulation occurs in that ovary, the CL will not regress. Why this happens? Because as you know that luteal regression is caused by PGF2 alpha, prostaglandin F2 alpha released from the uterine endometrium. And this PGF2 alpha reaches the ovary by means of utero ovarian countercurrent mechanism. Since the horn is missing, the blood supply is not there, so no PGF2 alpha is released. Or even if it is released, it cannot reach the ovary since there is no uh, ovary counter current mechanism or counter currents being there. So, what happens? The CL does not regress and it uh, remains in the ovary. So, it, it will be a case of persistent corpus luteum. The animal may be in anesthesia for months together or for years also. So, there will be prolongation of interestrous interval. These are cases, different types of uterus in white hipper disease. The right one, again, is cystic dilation of the uterus, the cranial part. In the left one, again, there is lots of fluid accumulator in the uterus. Now, fertility. Can a hipper with white hipper disease be fertile? The answer is, it can be fertile, depend, depending upon the degree and the site where the aplasia is occurring. If there is bilateral aplasia, and especially there is blockage of oviduct or part of the uterine horn, the animal will be completely sterile. If it is unilateral, one part is only affected. Sometimes from the other part, the other normal part of the horn, if ovulation occurs in the ovary ipsilateral to that horn, then the animal can conceive. However, the fertility rate will be much lower compared to a normal paper. Thank you.